Hey guys, welcome back to Artosis Cast. Hope you're having a wonderful day here today as we start out with Rich in his third game in a row here against Flash. So they're tied up one to one right now. Rich tried fast carrier both games, uh, ended up winning in a base trade in that game number two. Um, yeah, yeah, like it, just the, the idea of going for fast carriers. You know, I think what Rich is doing here is... I don't know the exact right word for it. I, I very oftentimes talk about how carriers turn the game into math really, really quickly. Uh, it's like, it's just it carriers... Say there are certainly carrier games which um, are not math, and there's a lot of tactics and strategy involved and stuff. But generally speaking, if you go carriers really quick... Uh, it very quickly boils down into like maybe one engagement or one movement <laughs> that is going to end up deciding the game because you know that's the thing about carriers once you get a certain amount uh they just they outscale everything in the game except for the defiler right that's the one caveat that i always have to give uh, like literally carriers, if it weren't for the defiler, they would be <laughs> the greatest unit in the game by miles. <laughs> but yeah, uh, the defiler doesn't give a shit. <laughs> the defiler and one Hydra and plenty of Zerglings will kill infinity carriers. So anyways, uh, this is polypoid now and we have flash going for a factory expansion. It looks like. Uh, yeah, yeah, nothing, nothing weird or out of the ordinary. Um, I think that might have been an 11 gas. We'll see with the factory timing. I wasn't paying super close attention there. Flash is going to scout Rich first, so I guess that's kind of nice. You can check if a zealot's coming. Of course, we can see that it is not. And yeah, this is 100% an 11 gas, right? Oh, wow. Wait, he went second depot. You don't generally go second depot if you go... S oh, no, it was, though. It was 11 gas. Huh. Just really, really good mining there. And actually misses the uh, return trip right there, as I say that. That's kind of funny. It's just like a mineral boosting trick he didn't do that time. As I said, his mining was really good. So, uh, scouting around a little bit. Doesn't see range as of yet. He's going to go back and peek again. He knows that there's no zealot being made. Nice quick Dragoon will be out, though, so he'll want to leave with that SCV likely very soon unless he wants to do something like uh, delay Rich by having him chase this SCV. Now, he sees the range get canceled. You know, at the pro level, a lot of people like to cancel the range. I feel like at lower levels, this doesn't happen as often. Um, well, I know it doesn't. Like, at low S rank, uh, you don't see as much of the the like range cancel where they try to go for like the three minute to three minute five second nexus the thing is there's actually like a lot oh that's funny and see this is actually why he let i mentioned before by the way and i'll get back into my point about the the range expand versus non-range expand but uh the reason why flash left his scv in there this is something he does a lot he'll sacrifice the scv so he can expand off one marine because if the Dragoon goes directly, like if you leave your, you make your SCV leave the base, very likely the Dragoon comes right down. And at that point, you need a bunker already done or you need three Marines, right? So you need one or the other. Or even if the probe is kept alive, then you need three Marines and a Vulture, right? So anyways, uh, that's why he sacrifices SCV like that. Uh, as far as seeing less of the uh, Rangeless Expand... Basically, if they go rangeless expand, if you made your Marines, here he didn't, he made just one Marine to expand. But like, let's say you made your three Marines, you can literally just skip bunker. You don't have to get it at all. Like you literally just can completely 100% skip it, zero bunker. Also, this build you see Flash doing, very, very good against it. You basically make one tank and attack your opponent. He actually started a second tank, so he might, he might wait for that secondary siege tank. But what happens is when they skip range, right, they have no units in front of you. And look, range is just now finishing. So all your goons are basically at home. So if your goons are sitting very far back, like let's say this goon sees your tank right here. 
Well, it's going to have to retreat. These two goons come up, and maybe you have them all together here. And now the tank is here with the Marines, right? So how many times can you kite back until you're at your wall? And then you have to run behind your wall, okay? So if there's no range and you can't have anything really out on the map, this type of push, you don't have a lot of time to micro against. And then they get a favorable position. So what you'll very likely see here is exactly what I said. It's just it's two tanks instead of one, which is fine. You can do either. Like, they both are real builds. Shuttle's out. He's going to know there's nothing in the shuttle. Uh, but he's going to basically push these back to the wall. And when you get them back to the wall, there's not a lot of room for them to micro. So you see, picking off a Marine, picking off a Marine. Okay, good. He's going to... Flash is waiting for... Like, wait, well, I guess he already laid his mines. Good, pretty good micro there from Rich. But you can see already two goons gone. Okay, lays another mine. And the thing is, he's seen the shuttle as well. So, you know, two goons, yeah, technically worth more than a tank. And honestly, it's the info that he's gotten, keeping him back, laying a few mines. The, like, you look at an opener like this, and it's just generally better for Terran. Speed is on the way. Two factories producing. He's got that engineering bay up as well. So he's going to want to go ahead and uh, make some turrets at this point since he did see that shuttle kind of poke in. And a very, very quick citadel. Okay? So I'm going to go out on a limb here and say he's going to go for Arbiter, but this could actually very well be quick size storm. Takes his third nexus. Right, the Vulture's just kind of running around using that speed upgrade. Flash has really been enjoying fast speed upgrade, even with that one factory armory build. Going into pure tanks now. Just an excellent uh, overall build here from Flash. But yeah, it, those types of pushes like you see. And the thing is, if Rich didn't micro that really well, that can go very wrong for Protoss, and you can take more damage than what he took. Right? So that that's what I was talking about with the uh, you know skipping range. Like if you skip range, you get the quicker nexus. Yes, but it gives Terran like all this wiggle room to do what they want. And it actually is going to be an Arbiter build. Okay, that makes much more sense to me than the quick storm, right? I said I was going out on a limb. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, it like um, if you're going to go into Psy Storm, generally you go into the storm a little bit later uh, than that. Like in, a Citadel that quickly is generally into Arbiter. So some very good micro there on both sides, actually. Neither of them really losing anything, but taking a ton of damage on both sides. And the fast Arbiter, you know, in these positions, it's like kind of hard to cover your main from the recalls. Ooh, a DT being made as well. I wonder if he's going to use that build. It, we, we had a few casts on here. I've had games on ladder of this one guy that goes like DTs. Uh, like, can he goes like... If I recall, like an Arbiter into Carrier or something like that. Um, yeah, not sure what we're going to see. That it's it. The thing is, you're like, yeah, well, he's going Arbiter. Of course he'll go DT. That's actually not the case. A lot of people that go Arbiter just skip DTs completely, right? They're already teching a lot. They don't want to buy a unit that's not going to do that much. Terran always has detection by now. So what is it really meant to do? Well, maybe it, maybe it baits out scans. Maybe that's helpful. Maybe it slows down the fourth base or something like that. But generally, this DT won't do very much. Now, Flash is going up to six factories really, really fast here. Taking a look, he has 50 SCVs. So this isn't the early SCV cut that we oftentimes have. Uh-oh, the building meta. Here we go. He is absolutely going for a six fact here. Arbiter is on the way. Now... The basically, if Flash gets a turret up here, he'll probably win. If he doesn't get a turret up here, he'll probably lose. Looking at what his opponent has done here, so he's got double reaver to slow him, he's got a DT right here to slow him, and he's got a DT here to slow him. Again, if you want to win with a timing push against Arbiter, you have to get a turret up. You just run out of scans way too quickly. Notice he's bringing multiple SCVs, those are for building turrets. One scanner two scanner so he's gonna have two scans here he scans one gets the dt okay this is actually this is kind of crazy right here comes the second dt this is gonna force a scan 
Okay, gets it with the scan. I actually didn't see where that scan was. I didn't see the actual scan itself, but did get it up and he's starting turrets. So he's gonna try to turret push up here. This is buildable. This little area here is not, but he can get one. I believe these this square here, yeah, this is all buildable right there. So his second turret will be somewhere in this vicinity. But this is where the Arbiter has to come out and utilize the Zealots. Notice that legs are finishing. So what you do is the Arbiter comes out and it flies forward with one to two Zealots that run up and cancel the turret. He has to prevent this turret. This is the most important part of this game by miles. So here comes the Zealot. Here comes the Zealot. Okay, stops that turret. Zealot's getting on top of everything here. This is like, he's sacrificing a hell of a lot of army. I'm surprised he's pushing that hard. Flash starts to come up. And he does have another scan now as well. So making this a little bit more difficult. But don't forget, he can still run out of scan here. Rich gave a lot of his army there, so definitely a little bit of an issue. Starts to run up. There's another scan, but now he's going to be out of scans at this point, right? So he's going to... He is going to force a cancel on this turret almost 100%. There it is. You know, honestly, even killing the SCV would be fantastic here. He's killing off the siege tank. You can see the cloak is actually how you hold on against 5 and 6 fact with the Arbiter builds. And you just... You need the turrets up. <laughs> it... Without the turrets, you never, ever, ever have enough scans to kill an Arbiter build. Basically, anytime people go Dark Templar attack, you want to uh, take a third base. Like, that's just in general a rule. Of course, Flash didn't know that until he was already moving out. Like, it was a Reaver opener. And so to go in that DT tech and go into Arbiter uh, has kind of tricked him out here. Now, look, he was trying to get a turret up here. He's bringing it back to this area that I was talking about before that you can build turrets in probably should have done that before he's lost a lot of units to cloak so far but his army supply very very high rich has lost a ton of units so far this game all right dragging some mines over here getting rid of some extra vultures look at this floating this over the <laughs> over the siege tank oh my god just laying so many mines down as well i think flash has just done it Another turret is being made right now. Still being very annoying with the cloak. You can see he's picking off this tank. It's just got to be pulled back. Even at this point, you don't want to be wasting cloaks. I mean, uh, scans. The cloak can't be wasted. <laughs> Only on DTs. Yeah, and uh, this really looks like it's going to be game over. Nice little mine drags into there and everything, but Rich is going to end up losing all of his uh, probes over here. And Flash, just, he has too much at this point. I mean, the, the turrets are killing off Arbiters. He's, you know, he's used the stasis. It just hasn't done enough for him. And it really does just come down. Oh, that was a really excellent stasis. It really does. These, like, in general, you don't want to try timing pushes against someone who has Templar tech because you don't have enough detection. You know, later on in the game, you have so many commsats, it's fine. Your army deals damage so quickly that one scan will kill everything anyways. Uh, you know, you get science vessels, things like that. There's a bigger spread of turrets. There's more mines all over the place. But in these small timing pushes, it can be really hard, right? This turret was incredibly important that he was able to get this up. And, you know, we saw Rich kind of holding on up here. I think the one big attack he did down into it where he lost a huge amount of supply during the scan was wrong without any question. I think that, uh, as I mentioned before, if you just keep on running in speed zealots and breaking the turrets over and over and forcing the scans, eventually you can do a giant attack. And it's going to be very worthwhile because they're not going to have scans. So a little bit wasteful there, and Flash is going to pick that up and ends up going 2-1 to one against Rich at the end of the day. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.